said it a couple times today that God is good and that's a that's a good segue because that's what I'm going to speak about you may be seated if we could get Psalm okay Psalm 34 8 it says O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I'm going to title this, Taste and See That the Lord is Good. How many like taste tests? I I want to see a, 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 okay, some of you do. And not everybody, raise your hand if you do like taste tests. Okay. Now, the mo- and this is good, because this proves my point. The majority of us didn't raise our hand. Why? Why don't you like taste tests? I, I, I can guess why. Y- y- you don't trust what you're going to taste, right? It's like, some of us, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll taste that. I'll go, I'll, I'll, be, I'll go for it. You know, I'll, I'll give me it. I want to try it. And, but most of us, it's like, no, uh, I'll... On my own, not in front of people, I might take a tiny little bit and smell it and then decide whether I'm going to taste it or not, but uh, I'm not going to taste it, especially not in front of a whole a bunch of people. Um, but we all do prefer things that taste good to us. Um, some of us, well, I, I have a nephew. This is a long time ago. I won't mention his name because I won't incriminate him. But it's it's not incriminating, and he's not here. Actually, I do have a nephew here also. But I have a nephew that we espied once sitting on the kitchen table. He was young. He was probably about four or five years old, and he had what looked like a popsicle in his hands and he's licking it and but upon closer uh, as we looked a little closer we could see that okay that's a stick of butter and he was halfway through this thing <laughs> and we, we, we had to say okay uh, that's not a, that he had take a he had taken a popsicle stick and stuck the piece of butter onto it and started eating it uh, um, so taste is something we, you know, we all like to taste things that we like. Generally, we taste before we consume. Although I, I do know some people who diet this way. They take food and chew it to taste it and then spit it out. I can't, I, I don't know if I could do that. I, I, it not, well, I could, yes, I have done that. I did that with peas once. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I'd be able to do that with, um, a hot fudge Sunday, <laughs> you know. I, I would be able to spit out the things that are good for me, but I don't know that I'd be able to spit out the things that are bad for me. Isn't it? Isn't it something how God made that? I think heaven's going to be the opposite. We're going to be able to feast on Sundays, and it's going to be better and better for us. <laughs> well. We can even eat too much of a good thing, though. Did you know that vitamins, uh, there's a toxicity level. If you take too much of any vitamin, they have, is is too much. Let's talk about another subject. Uh, This is a touchy one. How about wine? And I'll I'll just say this. The Apostle Paul prescribed a little to Timothy, possibly mixed with water for ailment. So God made things, and, and we know that, you know. Wine, also, I'll let you know, uh, wasn't just um, non-intoxicating in, the, in in both testaments because you'll see why in, in the near future when I read a story here. Um, but s- let's take wine, for instance. You can have a little little bit for medicinal purposes in it, and it can be okay. But the Bible says... Um, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess 
but be filled with the Spirit. So let, let's focus on taste. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of wine tasting here. I thought you, <coughs> you probably thought you never were going to hear this in church, right? Um, why wine? Because I want to talk about tasting of the Holy Spirit, which is referred to as new wine in our in the following text, which isn't our main text, by the way, sound booth. Um, okay, in our following text, because tasting the wines is like new, okay, the wine of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is like referred to as new wine here in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. We'll, we'll see where it's called new wine in the next verse, next scripture. You will not have to be, uh, with, with the new wine we're talking about, the Holy Spirit, this is a new wine that you can get intoxicated on and it won't harm you. This is a, a new wine that you won't have to worry about what you said while you were under the influence. In fact, the things that you'll say while you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit are things that will glorify God. And so they're things that you, you would want to hear. You, you would want somebody to hear in, 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 out in the open. Well, let's see what this looks like, what this new wine looks like, and turn to our, our scripture, our main story in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And we're going to read. It's a little lengthy, but you're familiar with it, and I think it'll go by pretty quick. But li listen to this whole, this whole story. This is an interesting story. This happened in the New Testament. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues. There's that speaking that you'll, you'll do while under the influence of the Holy Spirit, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, And here we go. This is where we get the terminology of the Holy Spirit being new wine. These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all Ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Well, okay. Is this still for us today? Well, some say 
this was a one-time event that happened and is not necessarily for us today. Well, did you know the Jewish law, being the Ten Commandments, given specifically to the Jews long ago, is good enough for us today? Even as a nation, we have them written down in our Supreme Court. So why wouldn't the outpouring of the Spirit given to the Jews not so long ago also be good enough for us today? The outpouring of the Holy Ghost did not only happen on the day of Pentecost. Later on in the same book of Acts, the Spirit was also poured out on Gentiles or non-Jewish people in the same way. You can read about this in Acts chapter 10. And finally, we that have received the Holy Ghost in this church know for ourselves that this is for us today. The, the Spirit bears witness uh, with our spirit. Romans says, for, Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So, we've received the Spirit and we know it. I know it. I know I've received the Spirit, but trying to get somebody else to receive it. Well, okay, I can tell you of some of the benefits, and I'm just going to name a few uh, of the many benefits. Eternal life. Um, he came that we might have life more abundantly here. The Bible calls his spirit the fountain of life. It, he, his mercy endures forever for those who come to him. His word, it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, gives us direction in life. The joy of the Lord becomes our strength. That's just to name a few. The benefits are really countless. Uh, one of them I'll, I want to give a short testimony of that um, happened in mine and my wife's life is that he is a comforter. And, and this happened for us. And, and, and now I'm going to tell you, and you're not going to be able, you're not going to be able to feel what I felt, the Spirit of God that we felt. Um, our son, as you know, Jeremiah, he was born, he was one of a, a set of twins. His twin brother didn't make it. So when we found out, that day we found out, we, we were we were kind of devastated. On our ride home, though, I will never forget the ride home. There was this spirit of whatever it took. I don't even know what to name it, but whatever it took to comfort us from that thought and to, to let us know that I'm with you and that everything's going to be okay, that was with us. And only God can do that kind of thing. For your specific situation, uh, it, only the spirit of God in you it can, can, can fix any situation. If not fix it physically, fix it internally like we've spoken of. It, he can still our minds. Well, some don't think they like God or they're afraid to try. Just like our taste test. Oh, you, know, you can say, I'm not going to like that. But you don't know, you know. You can look at God and, say, and look at, you can even look at people that have tasted God and said they like it and say, nah, that's not, I, I'm not going to like that. That's not, that's not for me at all. Well, first of all, we, we have to understand something that it, God is good. You're going to like him. What's not to like, Right? Romans 2.4 says, Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So God is good in even, bef you know, God has shown us his goodness before we receive his spirit. He's shown us his goodness enough to lead us to repentance toward him so that we can receive his spirit. But the question is often asked, if God is good, then why do bad things happen to good people? Well, instead, let me ask you to ask this. What would make people choose Christian? So many people choose Christianity and hold on to it 
in the middle of persecution or bad things happening in their lives. You know, not every Christian you see, you know, I, I'll, I'm going to give you a disclosure. When you, be, when you come to know God, life's not a bed of roses after that. You're still, gonna, you're, you're still going to meet life's challenges. But the inner peace, you, you, you have to taste it. You, I can't tell, I'm, I'm trying to portray this to you, but I'm not going to do a good job. You have to taste it. I'll do as good of a job as I can. You know, you've heard that saying, try it, you'll like it. And it reminds me of a TV commercial, that a, a little clip we're going to show you. Um, if you'll put your attention on this commercial and see if you're as old as I am and remember this. Look at this stuff. Some cereal is supposed to be good for you. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Regular, cinnamon, and raisin life. Nutritious, delicious. Okay, so that was life cereal. And Jesus offers abundant life. Oh, let's give it to Mikey. He won't like it. Or, you know, for us that uh, are trying to um, give this away, that to, that's uh, something for us to consider. You might see somebody and say, oh, they're not going to like this Christianity. But I've seen more than once a person you thought wouldn't like it ends up being, <laughs> ends up like, wow, they're putting me to shame and how they're, they're coming after this, <laughs> you know. Um, God won't force himself on us. You know, it, I've often heard it said, if I could give you the Holy Ghost, I, I would. Yeah, if I could pour God's Spirit on you, you I'd do it in a minute because I know you'd like it. I, I know you'd love it. I, I know you'd like it. But you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Well, we can lead, we can lead you to the Spirit of God, but we can't make you drink of the Spirit. This is something you have to try for yourself. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must first believe that he is, and you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you come to God, come with expectation that, yes, he is going to reward. I can come to God right now, and it's a promise that he's going to reward me for coming to him. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. You can. You, you have the privilege of going ahead and, and tasting this. And you know what? You can taste it. Uh, I've heard of people receiving the Holy Spirit at home um, and in a church in front of people. So this taste test can be done anywhere, but at least try it. Don't be, don't be the one that says, yeah, I'm not going to try that. Because it doesn't look like I'd like it, you know. It, and it doesn't. I'll, I'll be the first to admit that, um, it, you know, if you were to, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little story later on that'll, about my own life that will, I'll include that in. But before I do, here, here's another a promise to you. Psalm says, how excellent is thy love and kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. So trust is a big factor. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we shall see light. So there's a fountain there. There's, there's great tasting stuff there that God has for us. Well, so let me give you a short personal testimony when I was 10, I seem to have been 10 when everything happened, but I felt like I had the world by the tail, as they speak. You know, I, I, uh, I was happy-go-lucky. If nobody else thought I was, I thought I was. Um, and I can remember attending a church that 
I remember saying, I don't, if this is God, I don't want much to do with this. And by the time my, my father told me, when you're 18, you can, you can make a decision. I said, I can't wait till I'm 18 because I'm not going to church anymore because this is boring. I'm not living life here. Well, at 11 years old, that was changed because I, I had a taste test of my own. And, but it was snuck up to me. You know, this wasn't, this wasn't God as packaged by the world, like the world packaged it. This was God packaged by the, packaged by the love coming from other Christians who tasted and saw that the Lord is good. You know, when I was, I, God did this at the perfect time in my life. Is that 10, I can remember I tasted beer. And here, here's a little story. I had a lot of brothers, nine brothers. Most of them older than me. And so some of them had friends that came over. And I remember one night, we were all sitting on my mother's porch. And some of my older brothers and friends were, well, I, I don't remember if my brothers were drinking. But one of, my friend, one of their friends was. And he had a beer. And I was very impressionable then. And thought, you know, it, I didn't. It, it was offered to me. And so I took it. And I took a sip. And thank God I did. Because... I did not like the taste of that at all. And so I decided there, that I'm not going to... See, I tasted it, though. I didn't just go by what other people said, and, oh, this is good, you can have a great party and do this. No, I tasted it for myself and found out that, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to put this to my lips again. Well, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it was in that time, that very short time span, that the, that the new wine came to me, the Holy Spirit. And I got a taste of that... And only, I, I can only tell you what I can tell you. I can only lead you to water. But I can't make you taste it. It would be something you'd have to do on your own. And let me leave you with an invitation from our Lord himself. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus has now been glorified in his offering to fill you with his Spirit, this new wine. Why not take a, ch take a chance of a lifetime and taste and see that the Lord is good.